Project Borough is now available as a podcast on your chosen podcast providers, so you can listen to every episode on the go. Simply go to the description of this video, click the link to the podcast provider of your choice, and subscribe or follow Project Borough, and you'll be able to find all episodes past, present, and future right there for you to listen to on the go. Borough's unbeaten run reaches nine games as they draw away to Ipswich in what might have been game of the season. He's in. What is up guys, Matthew here and welcome back to another episode of Project Borough and today we are discussing Borough's one-all draw away to title promotion chasing Ipswich Town of course. The the story of the season this year in terms of the championship aside who have come up from League One, instantly took that momentum into the championship and have danced with three incredibly powerful parachute payment sides in Leeds, Southampton and Leicester and have been just as good, if not better, and are now top of the league after this point, but have done just unbelievably well. It's unprecedented, really, what Ipswich have done this season for a newly promoted side. And for Borough going there, for me, this was one of the toughest away trips of the season. You know, Ipswich are brilliant at home. They score so many goals at home. They create so many chances at home. They've had so many late winners this season, just down to the cauldron of energy and pressure that they put teams under down there and it's not been the happiest hunting ground for Borough over the years as well but we come into this game top of the form table in the championship they were second so the two most informed sides in the league were coming head to head here and it proved to be a thriller and all in all honesty it lived up to its billing these were two sides who were clearly in form knocking absolute holy crap out of one another because the chances both ways the saves from some of the goalkeepers it was absolutely relentless it was a wonderful game of football and i think a draw is the fairest result and it's more drama in the promotion race because again for the second game week running the top three Ipswich, Leeds and Leicester all failed to win again. No one wants automatic promotion and the same could be said here but the first half like the whole game was I mean you may as well just roll both halves into one it was just absolute carnage. Ipswich had some fantastic chances I'd say they had the better chances in the first half. Chaplin I think hit the woodwork uh, from a very well-worked corner where he was near post. Should have maybe done better, to be honest. I believe he hit the woodwork or missed narrowly. It was a very, very good opportunity. Hutchinson also had a couple of chances in the first half. But it was Borough who took the lead. There was always that chance in a game as open as this that Borough would find a chance or a goal on the counter-attack. And that's what suits us? You know, we've seen this away to some very, very good sides this season. The more chaotic, the more open the game is, the more it suits us. And you could see with Lath and Jones in there, we were always going to get in behind and cause problems for Ipswich. And that's what we were doing in part in the first half. And we got the first goal and it was through the man himself again. Emmanuel Latte Lath is on fire. He has found his feet and some in the championship now it's his seventh goal in nine games it was a very well worked move to the right hand side Luke Ayling who I will talk about and how I've U-turned on him a bit later put in a delightful cross and laugh with a fantastic header you know into the ground keeps it down makes it very awkward for the goalkeeper down and placed into the corner and I'm running out of words to describe how impressed I am with Emmanuel Latilaf. He has just been unbelievable in the last couple of game weeks. And I just pray he carries this form into next season because we are seeing him scoring all different types of goals at the moment. And for a player of his size, he's also pretty good in the air. And he proved that he can score with his left, his right and with his head. And he just continues to excite me even more. It was a very, very well taken header for Laf. 
and it put us in front. Just like we were in front in midweek against Hull, and unfortunately, like against Hull, we weren't able to hold on to the, uh, to the lead for too long, as Ipswich did find their way back into the game. As I say, they had so many opportunities as well. Hutchinson had one that he shot just over the bar when he cut back onto his left foot. He also was played in, and he put the ball round the side of Dieng. It seemingly in slow motion trickled towards the post, and thankfully for us, hit the post and went away from goal. But they did finally get the equaliser that I think they arguably deserve given their chances. And it come from, well, I say this loosely, former Borough man, Massimo Longo. I say that loosely because he signed with us as a free and never played a minute. But it's typical, isn't it, that he's the one who scores against us. But this was a little bit of a disappointing goal to concede. It was a corner from the right. He sort of got Clark in a bit of a muddle. Clark lost his man, got himself in a, you know, tripped over his own legs in a way and, yeah, couldn't get Luongo marked and he finished quite emphatically at the back post, to be honest, almost took the net off. Um, it was a very good finish from him and the game was back level and that was the story of the first half. It was just absolutely chaos, one way then the other. It was bonkers, but it went half-time, one each, everyone could breathe before the carnage resumed after the second half and in fairness again both sides had just so many opportunities i mean ipswich continued to have chances dieng was called upon to make some pretty decent saves at times but arguably it was the ipswich town goalkeeper hladke who was the star of the second half one caveat he may or should have i don't know the rules entirely but there is an argument he should have maybe been sent off in the first half. I don't know what the rule is for a goalkeeper handling the ball outside his area. And I missed this initially during the game. But I saw a picture of it afterwards. And it does seem like, and I've heard a lot of people confirm, he pretty much left his area. You'll see it on screen. And he rolled the ball out to an Ipswich player outside his area. It's blatant handball. And apparently the linesman went to flag, bottled it, his ass fell out, and he backed out of it. Whether that same decision would have been made had Borough been the home team, I don't know. But it sounds like the goalkeeper got away with one here. And I, I don't know what the rule is for a goalkeeper handling it outside his area. I think it's a red, it might not be, I don't know. He got a bit lucky in that scenario. But anyway, he was absolutely fantastic towards the end of the second half. Because Borough had two unbelievable opportunities. As I say, we were always a threat on the counter. And we had a really good opportunity for Isaiah Jones who was played in after Laff won the ball back, did really, really well to win it back, played in Jones, and either side of the goalkeeper, up or down, anywhere but where he put it, it probably would have gone in, but Hladke deserves credit for making a great save down to his left-hand side. And then from the resulting corner, I think it was, or might have been a corner, and then it was worked back out to Luke Ayling, he put another fantastic ball in. Mark Clark with an unbelievable header and Hladke somehow again tips it. Maybe onto the crossbar. It was a fantastic save nevertheless. And this unbelievable game just continued to just have some chances flying in. Goalkeepers making saves. It was a thriller of a game. And arguably it ended in the fairest way possible. And that was a one all draw. And to be honest with you, seeing Ipswich, how good they've been... The form they've been in, especially at home. As I said in midweek against Hull, this is a fantastic point for Borough in context of the game in isolation. Obviously, playoffs were gone anyway. They've been gone for a while. The nail was in the coffin midweek for anyone who was still believing. And there were still loads of Borough fans clinging on to the slight hope that some miracle might happen. If the nail was in the coffin midweek, I don't even know what's in the coffin now. I think the coffin's been now rolled into the cremation place or whatever you call it when you get cremated you know the coffin's been nailed shut it's then been put into a furnace and it's getting burnt to dust that is how, that is where borough's promotion playoff hopes now are but regardless just positives you know positives all over the place individual performances are performing really well we're competing against some top sides arguably we could have won the game today and i think this nine game winning run has been outstanding for borough and it is a, as I said in the midweek, it's frustrating in a sense that 
it's come too late. You know, if we were still well within a shout, you could argue we would have, well, we're top of the form table, we'd have the momentum going in to the playoffs if we were a bit closer, but sadly it's not going to happen. So, you know, all credit for the run, for the form, for some of the individual performances. Frustrated that it's come too little too late, yes. It's all about whether we can carry this into next season. You know, we've seen it, Ipswich are a prime example of a side taking momentum from a previous campaign and carrying it into the next campaign. If Borough can do that, while also making the team stronger and keeping the current squad as the spine of it, there's no reason why this this or this run can just be one big positive that we can take forward and you know hopefully unlike previous seasons like like, like this season especially we don't give teams a seven game head start where we don't win till october so yeah it's it's on us to obviously make the most of this and take it into next season a lot of borough fans are rather excited for this season and, and so am i you know tentatively excited you know i've put faith in Borough's recruitment many times and, and being disappointed. A lot of fans saying that, you know, looking at Borough's numbers financially, and I'm not going to pretend to know this for fact, but we should be in a position to spend well next season. We hopefully, because we're not relying on so many loan players like last season, we should be able to keep the majority of the squad together and only make it better. And we've obviously got lots of momentum, so... Yeah, fingers crossed we can carry this into next season and next season will be a really, really good one for us. I'm certainly getting quite excited about next season as long as the recruitment team can give Carrick the tools and we can make a good start of it next year. But yeah, a fantastic result for Borough against another very top side. And um, yeah, our fantastic season and our fantastic end to the season, should I say, rolls on. As for the Borough team then... Some pretty good performances across the pitch. Sonny Dieng did really well, of course. Didn't get his clean sheet today, but when called upon, made some pretty good saves when he was needed to. I thought the back four did pretty well, you know, up against Ipswich, who have got some fantastic attacking players and play some really, really good football. I thought the centre-backs, Clark and Rav, were solid once again. Rav made a very, very good tackle. It may have been in the first half. I think it was Samiento who may be running behind him. Rav made a fantastic tackle that he had to get right, otherwise he would have gave away a penalty. So he, again, is just so reliable. Engel, I think, had a tough first half. I think he wasn't helped by Silvera. He was isolated quite a lot. I think he did better in the second half, but wasn't helped with the lack of support by his winger in front of him. But Luke Ayling is really, really hitting form and I did a video not too long ago discussing the the forlornies of Boroughs and who I'd keep next season and I only kept or chose to keep Lewis O'Brien and I was sort of saying you know we don't need Luke Ayling next season I, I don't see what difference he maybe offers us but my I've been new turning slightly for a while over the last few weeks and I said you know a player can can play his way into form and maybe change our mind and I think Luke Ayling is doing that and I think the thing that he offers is his delivery you know it's underrated how many assists he might have five or six assists for us since he come in in January and he's put some fantastic balls in off the right hand side he really really has and I think more often than not he's a very very solid defender I think at times against tricky quick wingers he can have a bit of a problem but if he's got the cover and the support by some of the players around him I think he's more than solid defensively but going forward I think he's quite underrated, you know, the delivery, the assists, the numbers speak for themselves and maybe, just maybe, you know, he is worth keeping around as an option next season. I still obviously look at Tommy Smith and I welcome him back into the Borough side. I also think we should be signing a younger, more dynamic right back looking ahead to the future because we will have Luke Ayling and Tommy Smith who would both be in their 30s, but would he add enough? I think yes, I think his characteristics, his mentality, his leadership... I think he's got qualities that would add to Borough and would worth be worth the addition given he'd be a free agent. So I am U-turning on Luke Ayling and I would be not against seeing him you know, next season. I'm not going to be upset if we don't sign him, but equally, I wouldn't be too upset if we did. So yeah, he's certainly doing his best to get a contract with Borough and I wouldn't be against it if he signed one in the summer. The midfielders, I think, did all right. You know, it was, again, a very tricky game, you know, to, to have a grip of. I think when you're coming up against Luongo and Morsi, who are two players I never thought I would say would be a, one of the top midfield partnerships in the championship, but they are. You know, Morsi, a former Borough player, he looks like a completely different player to when he was at Borough. Um, he really is coming into his own this season, and Luongo, as I said, didn't even get a minute for us. Again, brilliant in the middle. So 
It was tough for House and O'Brien, but I thought O'Brien especially did really, really well today. Dead nippy in the midfield, winning the ball, the second balls, putting tackles in that were really important, breaking up play, and again, continuing to show his value as well. He's another one who I'd be happy to see here next season. I thought two-thirds of the attack were very, very good. I thought Azaz had a very good game. I'll be honest, I thought Azaz was, was very, very good. You know, he picked the ball up in some really, really tight areas and was able to control the ball well and get Borough moving. You know, he played a big part in the goal, playing the ball out to Luke Ayling. A lot of times, you know, he would pick the ball up in some really tight areas and, and although he doesn't have the pace that I wish he did, when he's on it, Finn Azaz, he... He's a really good player to watch, and he's another one who I think will come good and had one of his better games. You know, he was really silky, really smooth, and was very, very good in possession today. He'll still obviously try and play a lot of defence splitting balls that won't always come off, but I thought in terms of his ball retention and some of his possession play, he was fantastic today. Jones did well too. I thought he was really, really good on the right hand side, proved to, re to be a real threat up against Leif Davis. That was a, a battle we were all very intrigued to see, but Jones has had two very good games in the last two against Hull and Ipswich, and he's just looking a bit more direct, a little bit more positive, like he's got a spring in his step, he's got a little bit more energy about him. This is the Isaiah Jones we like to see, you know, direct, attacking quick, and again, I thought I had a pretty good game, and I'm going to put Laugh I'm just going to mention Laugh while I'm talking about him. I mean, I have always liked the look of Emmanuel Lati Laugh. I've always had a real soft spot for him and I've always had a good feeling about him. I just think he's good at everything in little ways, but I didn't expect this. You know, I didn't even expect him to, to hit the form he has done. And he is one of the reasons why I am so excited for next season. And it is incredible, really that we have gone from looking at Borough's forward line this season and saying the absolute priority is for us to sign a striker next season. It's crazy how Lath has altered that narrative where centre-forward's arguably not the priority anymore. You know, you look at how light we're going to be in centre midfield, maybe right back and other areas on the, on the left as well, with McGree being the only really good option there. You can kind of put your hat on Emmanuel Lathy Lath, getting us enough goals. Now, don't get me wrong, I still think we need one more. I still think... You know, if he's going to play force on the right, Laugh needs support up front. I still like him in a front two, and I'd still rather force be up there with him. But, you know, if we have another injury crisis, I don't want us relying on Josh Coburn again, who I think should be out on loan. So, I'm still all for Borough getting another forward in. Absolutely. But it's not as desperate as it seemed. And that's all down to how well Emmanuel Latte Laugh has done. I love Laugh. Live, laugh, love. And, uh, yeah, he's one of the reasons why I'm so excited for next season. I'm just delighted to see a player come from abroad, unknown, maybe had a lot of doubters, and we're seeing him grow and get better and develop. And that's fantastic to see at Borough, because so many times we've signed strikers who've come in with a pre-existing big reputation, and they've flopped massively. And we've bought them for big money, we've wasted a ton of money, and we've been let down by so many quote unquote big name forwards over the years so to see us sign one who was relatively unknown and to see him grow and develop and do as well as he's doing it's so nice to see and it's rewarding as well to see that and i hope he continues it on the only issue really was on the left we started sammy silvera today and i was all for it because as i've been banging the drum greenwood's not been doing anything to warrant a place in the team and i was asking to see sammy be given a start i was delighted to see him in the team but unfortunately, and it's frustrating, he just didn't take his opportunity. You know, he just didn't affect the game any more so than what Greenwood would have. And he did, you know, play a part in a chance Laugh had second half where the shot was blocked. Could have been handball, arguably, from the Ipswich centre-back. But again, Sammy, you know, he was, he was on the left, wasn't really helping out Engel second half. Clearly, he was told second half to assist Engel more, and then he was moved over to the right-hand side, because I'm guessing it wasn't working, then he was took off. I just feel like Carrick was was trying, you know, to give Silvera a chance. He was moving him around, he was trying to put him in different positions, and in the end, he got took off, and I think it's because he's our own player. I've been willing, and I've been rooting for Sammy Silvera to do good this season. You know, with Greenwood, I'm just like, he's a lone player, you know, it's not worked... He's going to be gone anyway, I don't care. 
But with Sammy, he's another one like Lath and like many others who've been brought in as a player who you want to see grow and get better at Borough. And there's so many examples of players in the summer who we brought in with that idea in mind for them to grow, get better, develop, improve. We've seen Rav do it. We've seen Engel do it. We've seen Azaz come in and improve. We've seen Lath come in and improve. A lot of the signings who we've made credit to them, they may have took longer than we'd hoped. They may have been slow burners. We're seeing that development and improvement. Sammy's one of the few who we're not seeing it from. And although we've seen moments, brief sparks of excitement, there's also been equally as many moments where your head's been in your hands. And I think that equates to him not really going forwards yet, not really going backwards. He's sort of still the same player we signed without that progression that we'd hoped he'd had. And that's a concern. And a lot of fans have said, you know what, next season, loan him out. Maybe that's a good way of getting him developed. And that, that, that could be the case. You know, loan him out next season to a lower championship side. I'd say maybe a top-end league one. But I'd ideally want to see him playing in the championship. And maybe he develops that way. But we've just not seen enough from Sammy Silvera. And it's a problem. Because without Riley McGree on the left, who else have you got to hang your hat on being effective off that left-hand side? Gilbert's not been given enough of a run. Silvera's not been good enough. Greenwood's not been good enough. And if we don't get up, you know, if we don't keep McGree for whatever reason, we've then got a big, big problem on the left. And that's why I said that could be a priority position over any other position if we don't keep McGree. It's imperative we do, but my point is if he's not in the team or he's injured, that left hand side is a real area of weakness, I feel. And Sammy was given the opportunity to step up today, and unfortunately, he didn't take it. As for the subs, we only had Greenwood come on. Uh, again, had a shot, second half, tested the keeper, which, you know, he does from time to time. Other than that, didn't do much. Balas had come on quite late. It was a bit late for him to really have an impact. But this is what the game looked like, stats and momentum-wise. You can see it's just all over the place. Ipswich did have the better of the first half, but Borough scored in their very good spell. Ipswich scored in their very good spell. We ended the half really, really well. Second half, again, we'd have a period, they'd have a period, we'd have a period. It was just a thrilling game. But as I said, I think... A draw was a fair result. Possession-wise, it was pretty equal. They did edge the XG, which I think you'd expect Ipswich to do at home. But it was just a shot fest. They had 21 shots. We had 11. But interestingly, we had the same number on target. They only had 5 on target, as did we. So, yeah, we got our shots on target a lot more. But it's, you know, it's obvious to see with Ipswich how they just love taking shots at goal. And I don't blame them. I wish Borough would take a few more shots on goal at times. But we equally had three big chances created, two big chances missed. Again, a thrilling game, end-to-end, -end, brilliant stuff. But what it means for the championship is the top three failed to win again. Ipswich did get a point though, and that could be massive given the fine margins at the top of the championship. But they are now winless in three. As a Leeds, Leicester have lost the last two. It is fascinating what is happening at the top of the championship. And then there's Southampton, who've got so many games in hand. They play Leicester and, and Leeds, I believe. So Southampton have got it in their hands completely. You know, if they can beat the teams around them, take points off the teams above them, Southampton could force their way into the top two because the top three just don't want to get promoted. It's, it's crazy how their form has dropped off and two of them three might end up crawling over the line at this rate. But Southampton might fancy it as well, which is incredible. But as for Borough, as we've sort of seen for a while, you know, it's done. It's been done for a few weeks. I know a couple of fans have been clinging on to hope that something miraculous might happen. But Norwich got a latish winner. Away at Preston today, meaning the gap to them is now eight points with only nine to play. So it's done. You know, Norwich need a point from their remaining three games. And Borough would have to win all three. It ain't happening, folks. So it's championship football for Borough next season. And arguably, you know, looking at the promotion race or the playoff race, Hull would need to win their game in hand to even have a chance at Norwich. You could argue even Coventry are too far back now. So unfortunately for the playoff race, that's become maybe a two-horse race at best. But I feel the top six are going to be the top six for now. But Borough, as I've sort of predicted, 8th to 10th, it's where we're going to finish. It is a shame that we've unfortunately not been able to put this spell and this run of games together a bit earlier in the season. But, as I say, the important thing is we carry this on 
into the next campaign, improve the squad, and hopefully next season will be a better one where we will only improve, which should mean playoffs at the very least next season. But our promotion wrecking Reds will hopefully keep that nickname as we head to the next game at home to Leeds United, who have well and truly fallen off a cliff. They're arguably now by far third favourites to get the top two. They've absolutely fallen off a cliff in recent games. They lost at home to Blackburn today. I don't think they've scored, have they, in any of their last three games. No, they did score against Coventry, but they lost that game. Suddenly, Leeds are bottling it. Leeds are falling apart again, dare I say it, and I would love nothing more than for Borough to compound Leeds' misery at the Riverside a week on Monday. I mean, any time during the season, this is a big game. You know, two sides who aren't fond of each other. I don't like Leeds very much, and it's always a very good game at the Riverside when Leeds come to town. So I'm very excited for this on Monday night. And by that point, depending on what happens with Ipswich and Leicester, it could be a must-win game for Leeds, and Borough with what will only be two games to go after that, could put a huge, huge nail in Leeds United's promotion coffin, as it were. This could be the game where Leeds' promotion or automatic promotion hopes could be all but over if results go against them. So a big game at the Riverside. All we're playing for now is, as we have done, away at Southampton, away at Ipswich. We just want to wreck everyone else's season. And I'm going to be honest... Nothing would make me happier than to see us do that to Leeds United at the Riverside a week on Monday. So I'll be back, guys, in just over a week's time. I might bring out a video between now and the next game, given the fact that it is eight days away, essentially, or nine days away from when I'm recording this. Um, and the Project Borough probably won't be out till the Tuesday anyway, because it's a late game. So, yeah. I'll try and bring a video out between now and then, as there is a bit of a gap between games, but this one should be a cracker, and Borough's form at the minute is brilliant. So I would love to see us move into 10 unbeaten, and also wreck Leeds' automatic promotion hopes as well. I say that, I kind of want to see Leicester bottle it more than Leeds. So I'm sort of hoping Leeds still beat Leicester at the second, because I think seeing Leicester bottle it and not get automatically promoted would be so intriguing but Southampton could come into the fray as well honestly the championship it's just brilliant isn't it I'm just so excited to see what happens but anyway I'll be back in just over a week's time guys to see what happens at the Riverside if you've enjoyed this video do it the like button and subscribe for much more Borough and football related content do it the bell too so you never miss an upload and comment below your thoughts whether you're a Borough fan Ipswich fan Leeds fan or any other fan I do hope Ipswich do it I really really do I'm rooting for them to be the ultimate underdog and beat the three parachute payment sides to promotion. I think it would be fantastic to see and fantastic for the championship. And from what I've heard, the atmosphere at Portman Road was outstanding today. And I just would love to see Ipswich do it. So, yeah, hopefully you guys do. If you are an Ipswich fan, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you're listening on any of the podcast providers, as always, do give me a like and a rating over there. But until next time, guys, have a great week. Do take care and I'll see you all in the next one.